Welcome back to the channel. This is Oblivion and the Hero Rises results have just came in and let's just get straight into it because this is the big annual event where we get a vote and possibly get to choose our free to play unit for the year. Now, obviously the top eight get into a voting gauntlet and then the top four get added to a banner. And of course the unit who wins, we get for free. So this is a big deal on these results. So let's start down at the number 20 to nine because these are the units who will not make it onto the voting gauntlet. So at number 20, we have Brave Edelgard. I don't know why people are voting for Edelgard, like Brave Edelgard, right? Like there's just no point. She's free to play unit that you could have picked multiple times. She's been on a million banners. She's currently on a banner right now. You can even get her as a four star special rank. There's absolutely no reason to vote for Brave Edelgard at all. And yet here she is. So that's kind of annoying, but she is number 20. So it's not that big of a deal. She's not gonna have any influence here. And number 19, we have Duo Duma, which kind of sucks because he is a pretty good far save unit, mostly for summoner duels in my opinion, but either way, it kind of sucks that he's this low. After that, we have Asker, who I actually would have loved to have on this banner. He's just a phenomenal unit in summoner duels and ether raid, so it would have been cool, but he has been ran a few times, so it's not that surprising. At number 17, we have Ninja Legyard. This is the first time a ninja unit has not made it into the voting gauntlet after being premiered. Typically, they actually win, right? We had Ninja Lin win the second year, and then we had Ninja Corn win last year, and Legyard didn't even make the voting gauntlet, so that does say a lot. After that, we have Ninian at 16, which hurts, because I love Legendary Ninian. I think she's one of the best dancers in the game, by far the best offensive dancer, so not seeing her in that top eight kind of sucks, though she is green, so she kind of would have messed up the red dream, right? At 15, we have Witch Corrin. Not a surprise here either. She is on the Hero Rises Engage banner right now, and you can also pick up a copy of her for free. So it's honestly kind of expected. But at number 14, this is a soul crusher. This hurts so bad. We have Duo Thor. Duo Thor is one of the best units in the entire game. She is so powerful, so good in every single game mode. She would have been a phenomenal pick for the top eight. Like, oh, it hurts to see her this low. And that the fact that we're not gonna get a chance to get a free duo Thor or possibly get a summon for her. At number 13, we have Aaliyah. Obviously Aaliyah is a great unit, but she's also very new and she's literally on the last engage banner. Like you easily could have picked her up by sparking. I believe that banner had two sparks too. So like very easy to pick up. I'm kind of happy she's not there. Not because I don't like Aaliyah. I think she's a great unit and she's a lot of fun, but I just think that like, she's not too difficult to get. I don't think you really need a ton of merges on her. At number 12, we have our first rearmed hero. We have we have rearmed Lyph, and this isn't surprising either. He was just on the legendary mythic banner with Fomortis and Goto, so people probably got a lot of chances to get him if they want him. Though he is a really good unit to have in the top eight just because of the duplication fodder, right? With uh rearmed heroes, and also the arcane sword is great. Okay, at level 11, this one hurts a ton. Duo Asker came out number 11. I should have been voting for him, I don't know. Duo Asker is an amazing unit and would have been uh, phenomenal in the top eight like getting that on a colorless share with other good colorless units would have been so good seeing him this low really hurts i know that he was just on a banner a couple of weeks ago so maybe that's why but either way it does suck to see him this low at number 10 though we have legendary chess and that's actually pretty strong i didn't expect her to make the top eight but i'm actually surprised to see her this high up here at number 10 with 4600 votes um, she would have been kind of good, but honestly, um, blue is a bit iffy, right? Especially without Duo Thor. Maybe if it was like the Duo Thor Legendary Shez share, it could have been pretty good. But just by herself, I, I'm not too disappointed not seeing her in the top eight. But at number nine, we have one of the worst results possible. We have Embla. Embla just barely missing that top eight, which is just so rough because she is one of the main units that were possible for the Red Dream, right? This is one of the units everybody wanted to see in there because she could just be so powerful in Aether Raid's defense on Dark Season and Summer Duels. She is just such a phenomenal unit to be honest. So her not being there is another unit taking away from that red dream. Now let's move on to the top eight because this is where the units really matter. These are gonna be the units who are in the voting on. These are the units who have a chance of being our free to play unit for the year or making it onto that big banner. So at number eight, just barely making it, is Legendary Veronica. Oh, I'm so glad to see her here. She is a big, big part of the Red Dream. She's one of the units I want the most on that red banner. So seeing her make the top eight is really, really good. Hopefully she can make it into that top four, but we'll have to wait and see. At number seven is Rearmed Robin. And this is actually really great as well. She is one of the really strong colorless units we could have had, right? Like her and Duo Asker would have been great share. 
The thing about her, right, is that she is a Yondra hero, so she not only gives you the Arcane Grimma weapon, but most importantly, she lets you duplicate fodder, especially armor fodder, like Hardy Fighter or save skills. So this is a big win. Very happy to see her in the top eight. Okay, let's keep going. Number six. Ooh, this is a good one. This is probably the unit I actually want to win the most because Rearmed Ophelia is stupidly good when it comes to account progression. And what I mean by that isn't that she helps in scoring in Ether Raids or in Arena, but in your overall account, she is going to offer a ton of fodder, right? And most importantly, Special Spiral 4, which is a very powerful skill. But by being an infantry unit as well, she can also duplicate a ton of valuable fodder, like Time Supposed 4, like Attack Speed Finish 4, all that kind of stuff. So having her would be great, and then having duplicates of her is even better. So having her on a big value banner, like the Hero Rises banner, could be really, really strong and make it really appealing to pull on that banner. So I'm very happy to see her make it into the top 8. Let's move on to 5! I, If you haven't told yet, I'm very angry, and this is the reason why. Because... Fallen Edelgard got number five. I don't know what people are thinking. I don't know if Edelgard, I don't know if this is a, if I should be mad at, like, mad at Edelgard fans for this, or if I should be mad at, like, trolls, because it, it, it has to be trolls, right? Or maybe someone botted these votes. I don't know, because who else could be that stupid to vote for Fallen Edelgard? There's absolutely no reason whatsoever at all to vote for Fallen Edelgard. She's a year and a half old unit, don't get me wrong, she's still good for Gale Force, but this is not a meta-breaking unit anymore. She wasn't even meta-breaking really after her like bonus season. She's just very good, right? At this point, there is no reason we should be having her in the top 8 in this voting gauntlet. It's completely stupid and ridiculous. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call all of you for the voting gauntlet. Whoever is up against Fallen Edelgard, we have to crush this unit. She cannot get past this round. If she gets into the top 4, she will literally ruin the Hero Rises banner. Essentially, not only will the Red Dream be dead, but just the banner itself, its value will drop dramatically. So whatever we do, we cannot let this unit get in the top four. So whoever she is against, that is who I will be going for round one, 100%. Because this unit just cannot exist in this banner. Number four, we have Ninja Camilla. Not really a surprise. She's a very powerful unit. Um, she's an amazing vantage sweeper, and everybody loves Camilla, so that's not really a surprise there. Personally, I already have her at plus zero, so I don't really want merges on her per se, but I definitely won't argue she's not an amazing unit, so that's not really a big surprise there. Number three, oh man. We have number three, it's a dual crawl. No one, you know, everyone expected him to be here. If he wasn't here, that would have been a travesty. Dual crawl is easily one of the best units in the entire game, and so having him in this banner is very, very good. If we can get him into the top four, that dramatically increases the value of that Hero Rises banner, especially if they're sharing with red, right? That's just super good value. And if we get him as a free-to-play unit, that's also just really good for the entire player base because it's going to open up so many more game modes, like Summoner Duels, really, and some strategies in ETH Rays as well. Okay, let's get to number two. Who is number two? It's my boy! It's my boy, Formortis. I'm going to be honest, I voted for Formortis. Um, I am a betrayer of the Red Dream, I know. But I couldn't resist. I just love Formortis so much. He is essentially a dream unit for me, and his implementation is so perfect. I just... Everything about him is great, so there was just no way I couldn't vote for Vermortis, and he got to number two, so that's really strong. I kind of, you know, I, I have to be honest, I really do hope that he makes it into the top four. I don't know if he will or not, but if he does, it's a really strong option, right? That could be amazing. So we have, and who's the number one? Who is the number one unit for A Hero Rises? It is my girl, Summer Edelgard, Summer Altina. Very strong choice, very good option. As you can see, our top eight is very solid and strong. We do have some great options here, right? Most notably, how many red units do we really have, right? We have Edelgard, Krom, Camilla, Ophelia, and Veronica. That's five red units, right? Okay, so the thing we have to remember though is how is this tournament gonna be seated? Last year, it was one versus eight. So we have Summer Elgar versus Legendary Veronica, which really sucks because that means that one of them will be eliminated and not make it into the top four. It's difficult to say which one I want to win. Honestly, they're both good choices. Then we have two versus seven, which is Femortis versus Robin. Personally, I want Femortis to win, but I do think Robin is a really good choice as well. Then we have Krom versus Ophelia. Ooh, that's painful. Man, that's really, really painful. And then lastly, we have Camilla against Fallen Elgar. So essentially what is going to happen here is that there is no way to get a perfect red banner because we have two of our colorless units that is facing off against each other, right? So either Fomoris or Robin will end up on that banner as long as the seating stays the same as last year. 
Now the question is, what kind of banner do we get, right? I, I think Camilla is a shoot-in for the top four now because she is against Fallen Edelgard. But after that, it's really hard to say. Ophelia versus Krom. Personally, I would go for Ophelia because as amazing as Krom is, Ophelia's fodder is really, really good. Summer Elgard against Veronica, I don't know. Honestly, that's just a hard one. And then for more sense, Robin, I personally would want for Mortis, but I think Robin's also a great choice as well. Okay, now I'd love to hear from you. Which unit do you want to see when the overall hero rises? And what is the top four that you would like to see the most? Personally, as long as Fallen Elgard is crushed and does not make it to the top four, I'll be happy. But personally, I think these results kind of suck just because of the matchups. I really would have loved to have like Summer Elgard, Krom, Ophelia, and Veronica on the same banner. And that's just not possible unless they change the seating. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe. This has been Oblivion. I'll catch you all later.